Are you curious about the interplay between Kubernetes pods and YAML? Today, we're going to simplify that concept for you. We'll begin by laying a foundation. Kubernetes, colloquially referred to as K8S, is a robust open source platform constructed to streamline the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. In layman's terms, picture it as a maestro leading a massive symphony of containers, ensuring each plays its role in perfect sync. Next, we delve into Kubernetes pods. These are the smallest and most fundamental units in the Kubernetes object model that you create or deploy. You may envision it as a singular instance of an active process in your cluster, possibly comprising one or multiple containers. In a practical scenario, a pod may represent an individual microservice or a unique software component in a larger application. So, where does YAML fit into this picture? YAML, an acronym for YAML Ain't Markup Language, is a user-friendly data serialization standard typically used for configuration files. It serves as the script for our Kubernetes maestro, outlining how and when each container should execute its role. In relation to Kubernetes, YAML files offer the design for creating and configuring Kubernetes objects, including pods. These files let you define your applications and services in an organized yet comprehensible layout, dictating specifics such as the number of container instances that should run or the network ports they should utilize. Grasping YAML is vital as it's the language that Kubernetes comprehends. It forms the link between the necessities of your application and the Kubernetes system actualizes these necessities. The relevance of YAML in Kubernetes is monumental. It empowers Kubernetes to skillfully manage resources, guaranteeing every pod, every container, functions as anticipated, contributing to the harmony of your application's performance. Let's delve deeper into the workings of Kubernetes pods with YAML. Take this journey with us as we untangle the complexities of Kubernetes pods and their interaction with YAML to facilitate smooth, scalable, and sturdy applications. So, what exactly is a Kubernetes pod, you might ask? Well, let's dive in. A pod is the smallest and simplest unit in the Kubernetes object model that you create or deploy. A pod represents a running process on your cluster, encapsulating an application container, or in some cases, multiple containers. Imagine pods as tiny, self-contained units of software, each carrying out a specific task within a larger system. It's like if you were building a car, each pod would be a separate component, like the engine or the wheels, each doing their specific job to make the car function as a whole. But why are pods so important in Kubernetes? Well, pods add a layer of abstraction around containerized applications. They allow you to manage, network, and communicate with your applications at a higher level without having to worry about the specifics of the container runtime. Pods also have volumes or file systems that can be shared among the containers within the pod. This is like having a shared workspace in an office where multiple employees can work together on a project. In the same way, multiple containers in a pod can work together, sharing resources and complementing each other to get the job done. Now, let's talk about how pods work. Pods live and die by the principle of one and done. They're created, they do their job, and then they're destroyed. They're not designed to be long-lived. If a pod dies for whatever reason, Kubernetes will not resurrect it. Instead, it will create a new pod to take its place. This is the essence of Kubernetes' self-healing mechanism. In real-life terms, think of pods like bees in a beehive. Each bee has a specific task. Once it completes that task, it dies. But the beehive continues to function because new bees are constantly being born to replace the ones that have died. Understanding Kubernetes pods is like understanding the soul of Kubernetes. They are the workers that carry out the tasks that make your applications run smoothly and efficiently. With that understanding of Kubernetes pods, it's time to see how YAML fits into the picture. Now, let's talk about YAML and its role in Kubernetes pods. YAML, or yet another markup language, is a human-readable data serialization language. It's widely used in configuration files and in applications where data is being stored or transmitted. Now you may wonder, how does this tie in with Kubernetes pods? Well, in Kubernetes, YML files play a crucial role in defining the state of your applications. 
they are used to create, modify and manage the life cycle of objects like pods, deployments and services. Essentially, YAML files are the blueprint for your Kubernetes applications. Imagine you're building a house. You wouldn't start without a plan, would you? In the same way, Kubernetes needs a plan or a blueprint to know how to build and manage your applications. This blueprint is provided by the YAML file. Let's dive a bit deeper into how YAML is used to define pods. A pod is the smallest and simplest unit in the Kubernetes object model that you create or deploy. In essence, a pod represents processes running on your cluster. The pod's YAML file outlines everything that Kubernetes needs to know about the pod, like the container image to use, the ports to expose, and more. For example, let's say we're defining a pod that runs a simple web server. Our YAML file might specify that we want to use the Nginx image from Docker Hub, expose port 80, and set a limit of 200 megabytes of memory for the pod. The YML file is then fed to Kubernetes, which reads the file, understands what is expected, and then proceeds to create the pod with the exact specifications outlined in the YML file. This process allows us to have a consistent and repeatable way to deploy and manage our applications, reducing the possibility of human error and ensuring our applications run exactly as we expect them to. We've seen how YAML is used to define pods, but how does this all come together? Let's dive into the working of Kubernetes pods with YAML. To begin, it's essential to understand that Kubernetes uses YAML, a human-friendly data serialization standard for its configuration language. This means that when you're creating, updating, or managing pods in Kubernetes, you're likely to be using YAML files. Consider this simple example. Say we're creating a pod that runs a single container. Our YAML file might look something like this. We first define the API version and kind, which in this case is pod. Next, we add metadata, like the name and labels of the pod. We then specify the spec, which is where we define what the pod should do. This might include details like the container image to use and the ports to expose. Once we've created this YAML file, we can use the Kubernetes command line tool, kubectl, to create the pod. We simply run kubectl apply f, followed by the name of our YAML file. Kubernetes then reads this file and based on its instructions creates a new pod. But what if we want to update the pod? Maybe we want to change the container image or add another container to the pod. In that case, we'd modify our YAML file and run the same kubectl apply command. Kubernetes would then compare the desired state defined in the YAML file with the current state of the pod and make the necessary changes. And when it's time to delete the pod, that's right, we'd use a YAML file again, this time running kubectl delete f and the name of our YAML file. Kubernetes would then terminate the pod and clean up its resources. That's how Kubernetes uses YAML to manage pods. But what are the key takeaways from this discussion? We've covered a lot today, let's summarize the key points. To start, we delved into Kubernetes and YAML. Kubernetes is a powerful open source platform designed to automate deploying, scaling and operating application containers. It's a system that's taking the tech world by storm and for good reason. It's versatile, reliable and built to handle the demands of modern software development. On the other hand, YAML, which stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language, is a human-friendly data serialization standard for all programming languages. It's the go-to language for configuration files and in applications where data is being stored or transmitted. We then explored the core of Kubernetes, the pods. Pods are the smallest, most basic deployable objects in Kubernetes. A pod represents a single instance of a running process in a cluster and can contain one or more containers. Understanding pods is crucial in navigating the Kubernetes ecosystem. Following that, we tied in how YAML plays a significant role with Kubernetes pods. YAML files provide the blueprint for creating and managing these pods. With YAML, we can define our pods, specify the containers they should contain, and set the necessary resources and parameters they need to run effectively. We walked through the process of managing pods with YAML. We saw how to create a YAML file, define a pod in it, and use the Kubernetes command line interface, kubectl, to create the pod in our cluster. We also discussed how to check the status of our pods and how to delete them when they're no longer needed. And there you have it, 
a comprehensive understanding of how Kubernetes pods work with YAML. Remember, mastering these concepts is a big step towards becoming proficient in Kubernetes. The journey towards Kubernetes proficiency might seem daunting, but with these fundamental concepts under your belt, you're well on your way. Keep experimenting, keep learning, and most importantly, keep pushing forward. The world of Kubernetes awaits.